Alrighty, you noobs, class is in session and your papa's got an egg of knowledge to crack upside your noggin. But first, I have a question for you. What does riding a motorcycle mean to you? Is it a way for you to get from point A to point B? Is it a way for you to enjoy the open road with your buddies on a Saturday? Or is it a way for you to purchase a personality like BMW people? Wrong! Trick question. Motorcycling is a skill, and like most skills, it takes years to master. Sure, you can take the MSF course and you learn how to not crash in a parking lot, but the second you get out on the road, you'll realize that you're comically under-equipped for all the skills you're going to need to develop to ride safely. We've made an X number of skills you need to learn in your first year of riding videos before, but today I wanted to go deep on five skills that are critical for your riding. These are both on and off the bike things that are going to allow you to step up your skills faster, save you money and who knows they might even save your life hey it's a pretty good title and thumbnail don't you think five skills to survive riding a motorcycle then maybe a shot of mark marquez high siding himself into the gravel trap and the words total noob i can see it now no way that'll make people upset yuzaku let's get on it now, I've got five tips for you today, but if you want to get the hardcore and learn pretty much every skill under the sun, the best place to do that is Champ U from Yamaha. You saw Josh and Spite head out to Champ School, which is their in-person track day school, and they came back different people. With Champ U, you can learn without getting out of bed, off the couch, or toilet or wherever you prefer to consume motorcycle content. All their lessons are crafted by industry professionals and racers broken down into bite-sized chunks with drills you can do off or on the bike. They'll teach you all the stuff the MSF won't and make sure you're riding safer and faster. In fact, you might hear some of the tips because great minds think alike. Click the link down below and use the code GITGOOD, that is G-I-T-G-U-D, because they're the dark souls of rider courses for 10% off the class. Seriously, if you're looking to treat motorcycling like a craft, and you definitely should, these guys will take you to the next level click that link down below and sign up now maybe josh and spike can keep up with me on track okay let's start out with probably the single most important skill you need to learn and it's one that i see vets and noobs alike struggling with it sounds simple but you need to relax i told you it sounds simple but you'd be surprised how easy it is to forget especially when you're starting out all it takes is a car passing you on the left just a bit too fast and spook you into a mistake or maybe you're holding the bars too tight because you're tense and you catch a tank slapper that's gonna make the whole situation worse being calm on a motorcycle is one of the most important things that you can do and it's going to help you in a bunch of different ways. Think about it like this, your motorcycle can basically ride itself. You've probably seen us riding around in vlogs, taking our hands off the handlebars for a minute, or racers coasting across the finish line, standing up on the pegs and waving to the crowd. In either of those cases, did the motorcycle instantly crash or burst into flames and explode like it was in a Michael Bay movie? Nope. Well, not unless it was Vinales jumping off of his bike at the Red Bull ring in 2020 or 2021, I can't remember. But in that case, he literally pointed at the wall and had no brakes. My point is, your motorcycle doesn't need any impact input to go straight. Once it's rolling, gyroscopic forces between the wheels and the crank are going to keep the bike upright and rolling down the road. There's no point in grabbing the bars in a death grip. Your motorcycle wants to stay upright. Even in a turn, you're clamping down the bars, your inputs get heavier, and that makes the motorcycle steer worse. You might think that steering requires constant input, but once the bike is online, it should just hold itself there. Not only will grabbing the bike super tight make it handle worse, but it is exhausting. You shouldn't get sore riding a motorcycle on the street. In almost every case, the answer is to loosen your grip on the bars and relax. It's hard to do, but a handy tip is to start with your hands. Keep your grip on the bars nice and loose and your arms and shoulders will follow. Lastly, try not to panic when something pops up in front of you. That's a great way to trigger fight or flight or freeze, target fixate or overcorrect, all things are bad. Be chill, my dudes. Number two is one the MSF flat out tells you not to do, and for the life of me, I'm not sure why. It's keeping the brakes on past the tipping point, sometimes referred to as trail braking. Now, I'm sure you've heard people say you're not gonna ride fast enough to get any benefit from trail braking on the street, and that's just wrong. First, let's talk about how the MSF wants you to brake into a corner. They take a step-by-step -step approach. First, you roll off the throttle, then you add the front and rear brake before entering the corner, then you release the brake and tip into the corner. When you 
clear it, you add throttle, stand the bike up, and on your merry way. That works, obviously, since there's a ton of riders out there who've done it for decades and are still in one piece, but that system teaches you that things can't happen at the same time. They absolutely can, and they should. The right way to use the brakes is to apply brakes when you're heading into the corner to compress your front fork to get the tire under load so you can maximize grip, and then keep the brakes on but release them slowly to the apex of your corner or even past it depending on the road. Then once you're happy with your speed and direction, you can add throttle and stand the bike up. That's right out of the champ school, by the way. What I said is a slight oversimplification because there's time spent at neutral throttle to consider, but everybody knows you should be either on the brakes or on the gas, right? Just kidding, folks. But the point I'm trying to drive home is yes, you can go into a corner with your brakes on. You are not going to wash out the front end by keeping a light load on the brakes. It keeps your tires loaded up and your front end compressed so that it works best. In fact, Bikes with long travel suspension like ADV bikes, supermotors, and dual sports all benefit from this technique because it allows you to shorten the rake artificially and lighten up the steering inputs going into a corner. Now, for a caveat for all you dads out there who think this is a track only skill, yes, trail braking works better the harder you're pushing and you shouldn't be going super fast on the street. That said, you can still benefit from trail braking on the street. Just don't dive bomb into a corner like your Jack Miller and you'll be fine. Number three is something to work on concurrently with your trail braking and that's counter steering. Remember how I said motorcycles have a bunch of gyroscopes on them? Well, those forces make it really hard to turn your bike at speed by pulling on your handlebars. Most of us are coming from the car world and think the right way to steer is to turn the bars right to go right, but in reality, you want to steer in the opposite direction. If you're coming into a right corner, try pushing the right side handlebar, which will turn the wheel left, and watch how the bike naturally wants to fall into the corner. Not only is it easier than pushing the bike down in the corner this way, but it takes less input on the bars. Yanking the handlebars down into a corner takes a lot more physical force than it does to counter steer. If you don't believe me, you can try this in some gentle sweepers. Try pushing the handlebar forward with just one finger, and the next time try yanking the bar back with that same finger. You'll find it takes more oomph to get the bike online by pulling on the bar. That's physics at work, and fighting physics is a long wait for a train that don't come. That's blues talk for, you're being stupid, stupid. Don't be stupid. You heard press right, go right in the MSF course, and you should try it out sometime. It makes a world of difference. Now, by combining all the last three, you'll put yourself in a better position to do number four, and that's experiment with a bunch of different riding styles. I mentioned this in my how to go fast on track video. You'd be surprised how many skills are transferable, or at the very least, how developing a skill in one discipline can improve your riding skills in others. Take racing. There isn't a single MotoGP rider on the planet who doesn't also ride off-road in the off-season, except for Fabio Quartararo. I'm pretty Pretty sure he just runs and gets tattoos of himself. Now, you might think that the only common thread is that both motorcycles have two wheels, and on the surface that might be true. For example, you don't want to try dragging knee off-road, and conversely, you don't want to push the bike down and drag foot when you're road racing. However, when a bike starts to low side, it behaves the same regardless of the surface. It's simply a lack of traction in the rear, and you learn the skills to feel where the limit of grip is at slower speeds off-road. That way, when you go to the track and push at 10 tenths, you'll know the feeling of your rear tire starting to slide out from underneath you, and you can roll back the throttle a little bit and keep the bike upright and not tumbling through the grass and on the outside of the corner. Same deal on the road. You shouldn't be riding like you're at the track on the street, but there are some skills you're going to develop that will help keep you safe. Looking farther into the corner, keeping your front brake covered, smoother throttle control and body position all work on the street. You're just not doing them to the extreme that you might on a racetrack. It's not just exploring off-road and track riding though. You should get on as many different types of bikes as possible. They all work pretty much the same with the throttle brakes and a suspension, but there's some subtle and not so subtle differences between the ways those bikes will behave. For example, cruisers and ADV bikes both have the same physical forces working on them, but they feel really differently to ride. Having that experience allows you to be comfortable and hop on any kind of bike and ride confidently. At the very least, all that experience will help you understand what kind of motorcycle you like and which ones you don't. Last up is one we've talked about before, but it bears repeating, do your own maintenance. If you have a chain final drive, you need to know how to lube your chain and adjust that chain. You should also learn how to replace your chain and sprockets. If you have a cable clutch and throttle, you should know how to clean, lube, and adjust those. It makes a huge difference in the way your bike rides. You should learn to bleed your brake lines and replace the pads for Rossi's sake. You should learn to air up your tires. That's brain dead simple. Same with changing your own oil, taking your tires off, replacing your exhaust. Even some minor electrical work is all worth having in your back pocket. It's cheaper for you in the long run to know how to do all these things so you're not taking your bike to the shop for everything. 
this is where I have to insert the Euro bike disclaimer. If you're riding around in a BMW, Ducati, Aprilia Triumph, or some KTM model, you've probably already got a great relationship with your service rider, but don't want to call up your local dealership and they'll get you sorted. For the rest of you, you should be able to do the basic maintenance items and some of the tougher ones too. I'm not saying go out and learn how to rebuild your top end unless that's something that interests you, but you for sure should have a service manual for your bike and all the appropriate torque specs and the common bolts to hand. You'll thank me later. Fact, when feeding, a hummingbird can lick 10 to 15 times per second. Goodbye. Well, look at you. You've made it to the end of another Yammy Noob video. You should consider yourself pretty lucky because I have curated this one right over here for you to continue watching. It's probably just as good as the one you just saw. Unless you hated the one you just saw. I don't know, maybe leave me a comment down below about how you much you hated it as well too. Or just keep watching this one. Make sure you keep watching Yammy Noob. Don't forget to keep watching Yammy Noob. That's the most important thing. Keep watching Yammy Noob.